I just finished actually. No, I got like 20 minutes left of watching the Monique on Club Shay Shay interview podcasting, right? I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, really good interview. Again, I'm I'm somebody that I'm not gonna believe everything Monique says because you know, it's kind of convenient that she presents it as like she's always the perfect victim and she does like kind of nothing wrong. I'm sure she does some things wrong in every occasion, but on, on each occasion there's probably an element where, where that she probably did something bad. But the thing that I like the most about that Monique interview is that it exposed, I think somebody said it in the comments when I put the clip up of the Kevin Hart segment, it exposed that that whole get along gang thing is fake. I'm sure most of us knew this, but it's disappointing to see, especially when it when it attributes to minorities. But it should be it should be obvious. If you're a minority, most likely there's less opportunities for you. So if you're at the top, you're not really going to try and give more people opportunities, really, are you? You're going to talk like you do because it sounds good to be like BLM, to be like black community, I'm for the people, right? It sounds good to say that, but you're not going to put it into practice because you're scared someone might take your position. So that's the thing that I like most about the Monique interview. It showed that throughout her career, Everybody saw her potential. They saw how much of a beast she could be if she was embraced by the industry and stuff. And they purposely, and in some cases, in Tyler Perry's case, they willfully put out fake rumors about her to kind of blackball her. Because that's what Monique got. She got basically blackballed, like the legit blackball, like where all the gatekeepers, because you have to understand from Monique's point of view, why it probably hurts the most is all the big main people in Hollywood in in America the black people anyway right except for Lee Daniels who she kind of made up with the Tyler Perry's the Kevin Hart's the Oprah's they all don't like her and they all blackballed her that's when you know you're it's kind of done you know it's kind of hard for you to come back from there because all those black gatekeepers are the people that the studios go to for referrals I'm assuming or for cosigns or for like rubber stamps to be like okay cool what do you think of so-and-so and they, they'll be like, oh, yeah, that person's good. That person's legit. That person is not reliable. So that's probably what Monique's real main issue is, is that the main gatekeepers kind of held her back. But another thing I got from that interview is this. I know we all know this now. I know we all know this. And I know we kind of know this because of Brendan a little bit. I think Brendan Shaw kind of is an example of this. But you know what's really amazing? I discovered from that interview with Monique on Club Shay Shay. It's really important to be liked. Actually being likable maybe goes far maybe goes farther or further than your talent. Say that again. Being likable is probably way more important in probably any industry than your actually talent. As long as you turn up on time and you do an adequate job, right? We're not saying like you don't do your job. Like we don't want personality hires, right? Personality hires usually, you know, that runs its course. But I think in most areas, it doesn't matter if you're working in Tesco, Target, um, if you're working in an auto shop, if you're working as a telemarketing sales guy or somebody, if you're likable and you do a good enough job and you're on time, you're basically done. You're basically sorted. And I think Monique's issue is that for whatever reason, people don't tend to warm to her. Even though she seems like a very warm person, she's got a really soft, soothing voice. She seems like everybody's auntie, that like you can kind of relate to her. Like she even kind of looks like my mum a little bit in the face, which is really strange when I look at her. She does definitely look like my mum in the face a little bit. Um, but she's got a very warm, open demeanor. But obviously in the industry, people don't tend to like her. So I took from that interview, similar to what's going on with Brendan, the lack of likability is probably the biggest issue. I think with Brendan, it's a bit complex because he's very bad at what he does, right? He's terrible at stand-up comedy. He's probably okay as a podcaster. I wouldn't say he's good. He's probably okay. Um, but as a person, he's a bit of a shithead, right? Especially if you're not somebody that's known. That's the thing with Brendan, you realise, especially with his previous beef with other comedians. If you're not some, if you're not like a Joe Rogan person, he doesn't really give you respect. Like before Joe Rogan embraced Shane Gillis, Brendan was quite dismissive of Shane Gillis, right? He referred to his podcast as not being funny or the joke that he made that got him in trouble with SNL, he just found that not, not as funny. He had some beef with other people, but... Um, obviously with um what's his name um fucking stavros he obviously didn't rate either he has that kind of vibe about him where if rogan doesn't rubber stamp you he's not going to give you any like you know he's not going to give you any little joy and you'd imagine behind the scenes papa's probably a piece of shit as well like if he's like that in camera with the stuff that we've seen and he acts a certain way just imagine what he must be like in real life right we, we kind of got an inkling of that through bgl Shout out to BGL, wherever he is. He kind of gave us a little bit of an insight into how Papa is behind the scenes. But that's the major thing that I kind of gleaned, gleaned sorry, from the Monique Club Shay Shay interview. It's really important to be likable. 
in some cases. Obviously, you don't have to go overboard and start licking everybody's ass and sucking everybody off and licking everybody's boots. Don't go that far. But there has to be a, you have to be intentional about being well liked. You have to have that be a part of your, you know, of your thing. Um, and I think even me in the past, when I've started jobs, sometimes I've been a little bit like, I, I, I'm, you know, every job that I've ever had where I went in, I was like, oh, I'm just going to work and leave. I'm not going to socialize. It always ended well. So it always ended badly. Every job where I was like, yeah, I'm not going to even talk to anybody. I don't want any friends. I'm not going to hang out. Mm. That attitude I had, every job that I did that sort of thing, it didn't end well. It's really important to kind of go into those kind of things and be a little bit open and chill. You know, all that sort of stuff is really important. But hey, what do I know? Um, I recommend you check it out. Really good interview. I liked it. Um, it's also refreshing to see somebody like Shannon Sharp, an interviewer, do his homework. I know that's a really low entry or low barrier of entry, but we don't get that anymore. We don't get people doing their homework on people anymore. We don't get them asking insightful questions or referring back to other... In like, when's the last time you heard somebody say, hey, I saw you say this on another interview, blah, blah, blah. People don't do that anymore. So it's good to hear, um, you know, it's good to hear Shannon Sharp at least try to do that. So big up Shannon Sharp for at least trying um, to put together a good interview. Do you know what I mean? It's not easy, but he did try. So big up Shannon Sharp. 